Hello friends, welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. I want to discuss with you how marine climate impacts are intensifying. Catches of fish are dropping off rapidly in the Gulf of Maine. George's Bank used to be one of the most productive fishing, fishing regions in the planet. Baltic cod are getting smaller. Sharks suffer the effects of increasing acidity of the water. So, marine climate impacts are making a mark on marine life. I've discussed with you in pre previous uh, video segments how many uh, species are moving because the water is warming. So they're moving either deeper and or, you know, to higher latitudes to try and find more, uh, cooler water temperatures more suitable for them. But also the water is acidifying. And if the water is acidifying, this has dramatic impacts on many organisms that, uh, precipitate out, for example, calcite to make their shells or tests. It could be uh, corals, it could be uh, phytoplankton, it could be mollusks, and as I'm going to discuss with you later on, sharks. And I've done video segments where I uh, talk about uh, the acidification of water and how the lysocline, where the sudden change in calcite concentration level is moving shallower, and as it moves shallower, in other words, below the lysocline, uh, calcium tends to stay in solution. Above it, it goes into precipitation. So if organisms find themselves in water where the, cal the calcite stays in solution, they're not going to be able to make their shells. And this uh, lysocline is getting shallower and shallower, making it more and more difficult for organisms that need to make a shell to make their shell, putting them at increased uh, vulnerability, increased risk, increased mortality. This is happening. Not to mention, and we're warming the surface temperature, and we that seasonal pycnocline could end up becoming another permanent pycnocline, which could crash uh, ocean productivity in the upper pelagic regions. I just did a, uh, a video segment not too long ago, about talking about how uh, ocean acidification can lead to mass extinction. Might want to check that out if you haven't done so already. Baltic codfish, which is a, uh, a very important commercial uh, uh, fish, very valuable, have steadily become smaller, become scrawnier, so there's not as much protein on them. And why is this? Because of the loss of oxygen in the ocean waters because the planet is warming. Remember, the solubility of gases decreases with an increase in water temperature. Water is warming up. Gas is not going to dissolve as readily. And we can expect, as waters keep warming and warming, that the CO2 that is dissolved in the ocean will start to outgas back into the atmosphere because the solubility is decreasing as in warmer waters. Changes in climate over the last two decades have cost the fishermen of New England their jobs. Their numbers have fallen by 16% since 1996 as total catch has fallen. And of course, if you're losing your job, you're losing your income. And a lot of them have uh, boats and equipment and other stuff to pay off. Going bankrupt. Now, change could be linked to a natural ocean climate cycle. Not likely, but, but nobody can be sure the decline will not continue as warm waters warm in response to rising CO2 levels. And of course, more CO2 in the atmosphere, more CO2 combining with water to form carbonic acid, right? You get your increased acidity, lowering the pH, so on. Now, this is where it impacts the sharks. The increasing acidity of the water is not good for sharks. 
Shaws can respond to short-term changes in water chemistry, not long-term. Increasing acidic waters can begin to dissolve the skin scales of the shark as well as their teeth. Now, when you look at the, uh, the, you know, the skin of a shark, it's very rough. It's almost like 60 grit sandpaper. But if you look at the scales on it, very, very tiny, it's called placoid scales. Scales are a dermal derivative, as are teeth. The same material that makes up the, the scales makes up the teeth. So the scales are starting to dissolve, so are their teeth. Now, yes, sharks can replace their teeth when one wears out or breaks or whatever. It just falls out, another one pops into place. Right? You've probably seen photos of uh, shark jaws, and you see the teeth that are you know, protruding this way, and then right behind those teeth, you see a whole bunch that are laid down flat. Those are the ones waiting to replace. So um, sharks don't need dentists. Let's put it that way. If only humans are like that. But uh, in all seriousness, if their teeth dissolve, how are they going to eat? How are they going to ca catch their food or tear a chunk off? They won't be able to. And there's another group of organisms that are at risk and that they could uh, disappear. The subfamily uh, Amphiprioninae, which includes the group of clownfish. And the species Amphiprion or Solaris is a clownfish you probably guys probably know as Nemo, right? From those uh, what, Finding Nemo movies, what, or something like that. I say honestly, I've never seen it. <laughs> but scientists uh, from uh, the U.S. and Sweden report in the journal Biology Letters that the average weight of specimens of Agatis morua, which is a cod fish that's forty centimeters long, had dropped from. 900 to 600 grams in the last 300 years, basically a 33% reduction in body weight. They examined the otolith. Now, otoliths are uh, ear bones and found in the middle ear. Uh, you have to, basically, if you want to examine those, you have to kill the fish. So usually when uh, you know, fishermen haul in their catch, uh, fisheries biologists will then sample, you know, do a statistical sampling of some of the ear bones just to ascertain uh, the age distribution of uh, the species. So they don't have to kill any more than necessary. So they looked at these autoliths of uh, 134 individuals and that were uh, collected from the last months of the Baltic winter. And then they looked at elements such as magnesium and manganese and the continued fall in seawater oxygen levels was to blame for the decrease in the body weight. So they looked at manganese because you can have magnesium oxide, manganese oxide, right? You can form oxides with, with these metals. And so they looked at the isotopic fractionation and then they compared that to the surrounding water. And basically what they're seeing is that the level of oxygen is decreasing. The concentration is decreasing. So they use the otoliths for this, but as I've just mentioned, they can also use the otoliths by doing uh, thin cross sections uh, to age the fish. It's kind of like tree rings, if you will. So uh, Karen Lindberg, who is an ecologist at State University of New York, who is the lead author, states that the cod themselves are telling us through their internal uh, logbooks, that's her word, that they are affected by hypoxia, which is reduced oxygen availability, which we know is driven by climate change and nutrient loading. In other words, the nutri uh, nutrient levels are decreasing as well. Our findings suggest fish are in worse condition because of hypoxia. In the Gulf of Maine, which is off the U.S. Uh, eastern seaboard, catches of fish and shellfish have been falling, as I mentioned before, and with them, the number of people employed in the fisheries, I mentioned before, 
Kimberly uh, Oramus of the University of Delaware reports in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that successive warm winters have impacted negatively the catch and thus the incomes of the fishermen. Now, just a brief word. Okay, I mentioned you know what's going on with the clownfish, but the reason why they may not survive is bleaching of the coral reefs due to increased acidity. So I want to, want to mention that, and I realize I did not mention that earlier. Going back to uh, Dr. Oramus, she matched decades of climate data, looked at landing figures, knows uh, uh, how much tonnage was hauled in by the fishermen, and sales data to identify a pattern of decline linked principally to the North Atlantic Oscillation. I did a video on the North Atlantic Oscillation. New England water is among the fastest warming in the world. Warmer than average sea surface temperatures have been shown to impact the productivity of lobsters, sea scallops, groundfish, other fisheries important to the region. Especially when they are most vulnerable from spawning through the first year of life. Paradoxically enough, if you increase water temperature, you decrease growth rates because these, these uh, species are ectotherms. And basically, they are not able to take that uh, because as you increase the water, their body temperatures increase. And therefore, they burn through their metabolism. Cooler temperatures, they can take that energy, the, what they ingest, and build tissues. But warmer temperatures increase metabolic rates, and they're not able to build tissue. They're just using whatever energy they're ingesting just to run their metabolism. That's why, you know, if you're an endotherm, it doesn't matter. You know, you have endotherms have ways, uh, ways to... Uh, Keep the body temperature cool. Whether it's cold outside, warm outside, there's ways to regulate. Ectotherms don't have that ability. So increasing water temper uh, temperature increases the metabolic rate, decreases the ability to put on protein, and thus decreases their growth rates. That's what's going on. Now, as far as from when they uh, spawn, from hatch out through their first year of life, typical uh, for fish, a lot of uh, marine organisms, especially to do uh, what's called... Uh, release spawning, logic spawning, it's about a 90 to 99% mortality in the first year. Which is why a lot of fish produce hundreds of thousands, millions of eggs. Hoping to get that 1 to 5 to 10% that survives to breed a few years down the line. Well, guess what now what happens when you start overfishing them? You start pulling out the adults. Less to breed. Why, is why some of the fish stocks have collapsed because of this overfishing. And those that do survive, you're finding that you know, whatever adults are there are smaller and smaller because they're not a chance to grow to larger sizes. So here's another bit of a positive feedback loop uh, being set up. So uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ormus continues to state, this is an important signal to incorporate into fisheries management process. We need to figure out what climate is doing to fisheries in order to cope with it. Okay. Now, I've discussed this before, but let's do a, a, a report that appeared in the journal Ecology Letters. An important part of the marine ecosystem that in the long run may not be able to cope are what's called short episodes of hypercapnia, or dramatic rise in dissolved CO2. Now, these are features that can be, that are linked, not can be, they are linked to seasonal oceanic upwellings. They can last for days until a return to typical ocean chemistry takes place. Uh, excuse me, uh, I got my reports mixed up. This report appears in scientific reports. The ecology letters is for a uh, is a related is a story, but goes back to uh, the, the Nemo guys. European South Africa researchers offer evidence that though cartilaginous fish, sharks, skates, rays, right, 
ever more acidic oceans offer a new hazard. Now, they're, they evolved to deal with that. But again, it's the, inc the rapid increase in the acidity that's causing them problems. So they looked at a, a group of, of fish called puff adder shy sharks. The increasingly acid environment was literally corrosive. They lost a quarter of their skin denticles, right, the placoid scales I referenced earlier, as well as their teeth. Now, loss of teeth or the weakening of the teeth impacts their ability to obtain food. The loss of the scales will impact their hydrodynamics as well as skin protection. So this is impacting sharks' ability to swim and feed. Okay, now the Ecology Letters paper that uh, looked at uh, what's going on with the Nemo group. Right? Obviously, I made a reference earlier that the bleaching, uh, the corals are bleaching due to the increased acidity because the uh, Nemo clownfish, they hide, they hang out in the sea anemones. Sea anemones are dying with the increased acidity. That is making the clownfish group more vulnerable. As the coral reefs are lost, many species, homeless, helpless, increase their mortality. Sergei Planis of the French National Center of Scientific Research, one of the authors, said that the clownfish is at the mercy of a habitat that is degrading more and more every year. To expect a clownfish to genetically adapt at a pace that will allow it to persist is unreasonable. Simon Thorold of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute added, Nemo won't be able to save himself. The point I wanted to hit upon that, to expect a clownfish to genetically adapt at a pace. Let's now make a broad statement. To expect any species to genetically adapt at a pace that allow it to persist in a rapidly fast changing world is unreasonable. In other words, the changes that we are seeing are happening too fast for organisms to adequately adapt. And this is one of the many factors that is leading to an increase in mortality, which will then lead to increase in mass extinction. Things are happening too fast for the animals to adapt. They can't adapt fast enough, and thus they're going to die, and this, their species are going to go extinct. There you have it. Okay. Earth is an ocean planet. The oceans, I'll be blunt, are dying. Thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.